Guys, we need to talk about Ethereum. Things have been looking really ugly in the crypto markets for the past few months. The price of ETH has dropped dramatically, but it's starting to show signs of recovery. Hardly anyone expected the year to start out like this, but despite all this, there's one major event coming down the pike for Ethereum very soon a massive network upgrade that's gonna fundamentally change how the blockchain works, taking it one step further towards prime time so that it can scale to billions of users for mass adoption. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this, what it's going to do, when it's going to happen, so that you can mark your calendars, and finally, what could this do to the price of Ether? So trust me, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this, whether you're an ETH holder, a developer, or just interested in this technology. I'm gonna explain everything in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you wanna see how to take advantage of all the insane opportunity happening in the crypto space right now, I can show you how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer step-by-step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this big Ethereum upgrade that's just around the corner. So obviously nothing I'm saying in this video is designed to be financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any cryptocurrency based on this information. But in case you're relatively new to the blockchain space or you don't quite understand how Ethereum works, that's okay. A lot of people actually don't. Um, you have to understand that Ethereum is still a work in progress. People love to hate on Ethereum and you know, they say it's too slow, it's too expensive, but that's not going to be the case forever. And really, it's not even the case right now if you know how to use it properly. And a lot of people don't know that Ethereum is completing a multi-year roadmap to make it a lightning fast, scalable blockchain that's primed for mass adoption so that we can do things like handle global payments that rival the speed and scale of major credit card transaction processors like Visa and can completely overhaul the banking system. So the next major move on that roadmap is the Ethereum Pectra update. So... What is the Pectra update? Well, I've talked about this a few times on my channel now, but it's a major update for the Ethereum protocol that's going to have a lot of major changes. So let's see what those are. All right, so there's a lot of different things to upgrade, but I'm going to start talking about things sort of in priority order, the things that I think are most impactful to the upgrade, and then we'll talk about some things that are maybe less impactful. So one of the things that I'm most excited about this upgrade is the introduction of smart wallets or smart accounts. This comes with EIP 7702. So basically right now, when you have an Ethereum wallet, let's say you something like MetaMask for an account, that's an externally owned account. All right, that's that's represents you, the user on the blockchain. And these accounts have some frustrating limitations. Like, for example, you know, if you wanted to be able to trade tokens on a DEX, you have to do multiple steps to approve a token and then swap it. You can't do things like batching. You can't do subscription payments. You can't, you know, authenticate with any mechanism that you want to. But a lot of that's about to change with introduction of smart accounts. So what this does is it basically takes your externally owned account and introduces something called account abstraction. Extraction. So basically, your externally owned account, your, your wallet and MetaMask can be temporarily converted into a smart contract account. So basically, whatever a smart contract can do on the blockchain, now your wallet will be able to do that in addition to many other things that smart contracts can't even do right now. So what are some of those things? So number one is you can batch transactions. So we talked about before, like if you're trying to trade tokens on a DEX, right now you have to approve the token and then swap it. You have to sign multiple things. Well, you can do all this on one go with Ethereum now. You can delegate control to a smart wallet. So right Right now, you know, doing things like subscription payments really doesn't work very well in crypto because somebody has to have money in the account. They have to sign the transaction anytime something goes out of their wallet, unless they're just parking funds in a smart contract. But basically, this would open up the door for new business models in crypto like subscription payments, which currently we can't really do. You can do things like sponsoring other people's transactions. So if you want to do a transaction on the blockchain, I could actually pay the gas fee for that. So you might say like, well, why would I do that for you? Well, you have to understand this. It opens up the door to a new business model and user experience for crypto that people have been complaining about for a long time. So a lot of people say, hey, people are not going to use blockchain applications that aren't finance related because they have to pay gas fees to put stuff on the blockchain. Well, that's true in a lot of cases. But what happens when the applications can now start paying your gas fees for you? If there's an economic incentive for a user to be able to make transactions where the app will actually cover the gas fees, it doesn't cost you anything. That can open up the door to a ton of new business models in crypto. And that's exactly what this update's also enabling. It can do things like make you pay for transaction fees in a different cryptocurrency besides Ether. 
So if you get on you know, the blockchain and you have USDC in your wallet, a stable coin, and you just want to start using the blockchain, well, right now you also have to have a second cryptocurrency, which is Ether, which is kind of an annoying user experience problem for a lot of people, okay, to pay the gas fees. But with this update, you can actually pay the gas fee with USDC. Now, behind the scenes, it's going to get converted back to Ether to pay the validators. But from the end user's perspective, all they have to do is hold one cryptocurrency in their wallet. That's a major game changer for scalability, adoption, user experience, all that type of stuff. Now, there's a lot of other stuff with account abstraction. We're just kind of scratching the surface of this, but those are some of the big ones. It'll also enable things like social recovery for accounts. If you ever lose your pat, your seed phrase or your private key, other people can help you recover that. You can have things like session keys if you're trying to like play a game or something like that. Uh, you can have other authentication mechanisms that don't require you to memorize a 12 word seed phrase and a lot of other quality of life improvements. Now, I listed smart wallets first because those are some of the biggest wins that I see with this upgrade that can basically move us closer towards mass adoption. Now, just behind that is a scalability benefit that we're going to get with this upgrade. OK, so again, people talk about Ethereum being too slow, too expensive to use for mass adoption. Well, this upgrade actually is going to make Ethereum faster and cheaper to use. So how is that? Well, earlier in this video, I also said that like right now, Ethereum is actually not that slow. It's not that expensive to use if you know how to use it correctly. So right now, if you're doing transactions like directly on Ethereum, the layer one, it still is pretty slow. It's still kind of expensive, even though it's not that expensive because the gas fees are down and the ETH price is low. But if you use something like an Ethereum layer two, it's insanely fast and it's incredibly cheap. All right. So that's what, you know, scalability for Ethereum is about. Basically using a separate environment, a layer two that piggybacks on top of Ethereum where you pay the gas fees and ETH and those transactions get settled back on the main chain. Basically, most of these are roll ups. OK, and they do batches of transactions that get rolled up and a reference to those transactions gets included back in the Ethereum main chain. Now, with this upgrade, we're actually going to improve the efficiency of the layer twos through blob scaling. So basically this EIP uh, 7691, it doubles the number of blobs that can be processed per block. <laughs> okay. Basically allowing Ethereum to handle significantly more data and process it more efficiently. So if you have more transactions, basically twice as many, you're basically going to twice the scalability of these layer twos for the blobs that are going on to Ethereum, which is going to make it faster, cheaper to use for the end user, which is a huge win for adoption. All right. Now there's a lot of other things in this update that I don't think most people are really going to get a benefit from or even notice that change on the network. But some people who are staking, who might be watching this channel, uh, will want to know that now if you're running a validator on Ethereum, um, you can actually stake more than 32 Ether on that validator. Now, this is not going to apply to most people, but whenever you're running a validator, basically you're running one of the computers that helps maintain and, and execute transactions in the blockchain, and you want to stake Ether, you have to stake Ether to do this, you have to stake 32 Ether to do this. Now, that's a lot of money. And most people watching this video aren't going to do this, but some will. But one annoying thing is if you have like 33 Ether, okay, you don't get the benefit of staking that to your validator. You have to have 32 more Ether to run a second validator to have some exact multiple of 32 in order to do this. But with this update, now you can stake more than 32 Ether to run a single validator, which is a big win for the network. All right. So when is this upgrade going to happen? Well, it is going to go live on May 7th, which is just a few short weeks away at the time of recording this video. OK, so mark your calendar for May 7th, because that is when the Ethereum Petra upgrade goes live and moves us one step closer towards mass adoption and scalability. Now, really quickly, if you're a regular view of this channel, I'm going to drop a little hint. Uh, about something very exciting coming around this same time, just a week after this, okay, following this upgrade on May 15th. Can't really share a lot of details right now in this video, but I am going to make a pretty official announcement about it soon. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss that. And if you want to be the first to know, you can definitely sign up to receive an email alert uh, whenever you join the free training over at adaptdiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so finally, we have to talk about the Ethereum price or the ETH price, okay? So obviously, you know, this is down. This is not what a lot of people expected to the start of the year, okay? So what, what what's going on with the ETH price? What could this upgrade potentially do uh, to help the price of ETH or even hurt it? Well, obviously, again, nothing I'm saying right now does not be financial advice. I'm just going to give you my current outlook on the state of things. So, you know, why did the price go down in the first place? Well, if you look at the entire crypto market, 
Uh, the entire crypto market has basically been down only since the beginning of the year. Now, some things have been hit harder. You know, Ethereum's gotten hit particularly hard in this case. So what could happen next? Well, again, the entire crypto market seems to be down pretty correlated with the stock market. OK, obviously, there's a lot of things going on in the economy with the new administration kind of moving fast and breaking things. We got tariff fears. We got all types of things that people are kind of panicking about in the broader markets. So I think the number one thing to watch out for the Ethereum price really is going to be the performance of the stock market over the next you know coming weeks and months. You know, if, if the stock market is just down only and continues to be down only, I, it doesn't set really fertile ground for something like the Ethereum price to recover quickly. Now, does that mean that that's a, a death knell long term for the ETH price? No, I don't think so. I think this is uh, a period where, you know, the price does not match fundamentally what's going on in the ecosystem. I think things do look oversold and I do think they will recover. Again, not financial advice, but that's just my current position. But how could this upgrade help or hurt, you know, in, in the next coming months? Well, if things decide to, you know, chill out in the stock market, if things stop falling, if things kind of find a bottom, then we could see the ETH price start to recover. And, you know, this update coming down the pike could actually be a positive catalyst for the network, okay? Now that's going to bring us to the next point, which is, you know, is this going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news situation where people are trying to accumulate ETH ahead of time and then just dump it right before the network upgrade goes live and the price falls again even further? So, I mean, really, I just don't think that Ethereum is at the focal point of the spotlight right now for that type of pressure to really make that much of a difference. Like, if everybody just thought that ETH was about to go to the moon, you know, I think we could see a buy the rumor, sell the new situation. We still might see a little bit of one, but I don't see it being like a massive pump and dump scenario right before this upgrade going live. I just don't think enough people are paying attention. So in terms of the upgrade being a negative catalyst for it, I don't think so. If the stock market, you know, levels off or starts to recover slowly, then I could see this type of thing, you know, being positive for the ETH price. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What's going to happen to the price of Ether before this upgrade goes live? Is it even going to make a difference? I want to hear from you. And whenever you're finished leaving your comment, make sure you smash that like button down below, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to see how to take advantage of all the insane opportunity happening in the blockchain space right now, I can show you how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer step by step from start to finish over at dappadiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. The next time, thanks for watching Dapp Diversity.